Hi everybody, so let's get started. I have found this yarn in my stash. It is Jitterbug. I do not remember the color, um, but I think it will work with this. I've also decided to use, uh, I'm going to be using size US size one needles, which is a 2.5 millimeter. I am using a regular, this one is an Addy Turbo needle here. And this one is an Addy lace, uh, and I'm deci I decided to use these so that you the color cable would be different, as well as the needle itself would be a different color. So you'd be able to see a little easier when I transition from one needle to the other. So what I also decided to do too was knit a slightly larger sock. I'm actually going to do a child sock. It's not a dramatic difference, but instead of working over 32 stitches, I'm going to be working over 44. I think it just gives you a little bit more to see as I'm knitting along. So I'm going to cast on using... No, no, I also want to say I actually borrowed a um, camera stand from my friend Ellen, who is knit like a lefty. And so I'm not quite used to it yet, but it's really, really awesome. So I hope that this works, everybody. So I'm going to do a standard long tail cast on and I'm going to cast on 44 stitches. Let's move this one. And I do apologize for the needle clinking on the table. Um, it's a little unavoidable. Now, how do I estimate? I I'm not really going to do a long tail tutorial. Um, I just kind of guesstimate how much to use, but I'm going to cast on for you. There we go. I'm sorry. I was out of range of the camera. So I'm going to cast these stitches on and we'll be back in just one second. So as you can see, I now have all 44 stitches cast onto one needle. Now I'm going to pick up the second needle and I'm going to transfer half of those stitches onto the second needle. And all I'm going to do is slip those stitches, I'm going to come a little closer here, slip those stitches as if to purl from the left needle onto the right needle. Very standard, and you usually slip as if to purl unless a pattern tells you to do otherwise. So I'm just gonna slip these over. Let's get those, you just see what I'm doing. So again, I'm just going like this. I'm just moving the stitches over. Uh, I'm not counting, hold on. So that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19, there's 20, 21, 22. Okay, now, here comes the fun part. So now, as you can see, I've got half the stitches on my right needle, half the stitches on my left. The top here is already joined. That's where, that was from the original cast on. So now what I'm going to do is slide these stitches to the other end of the needles. So I'm gonna hold here and just simply pull these through. Now just bear with me because I'm kind of doing this semi-blind because of this new stand. I really do love it though. <laughs> uh, the techie in me, the technology junkie in me absolutely loves this thing. Thank you Ellen if you're watching. So now the key is to make sure as you do with any knitting, knitted garment that's in the round, you want to make sure that your stitches are not twisted. All of the bottoms the base of the stitches are facing each other. Okay, I can see everything's going in the same direction. The actual stitches are on the outsides. So what you do now, now I know there may be an easier way to do this. It's how I learned from Kat Bordy's book, Sock Soar on Two Circular Needles. I do it every single time I knit anything in the round. So that is what I'm gonna show you. I'm going to crisscross, come a little closer. I'm gonna crisscross these two top stitches. So this one's gonna go here, this one's gonna overlap. Now you do this side first because this was the first stitch that you cast on and it's a little bit tighter. So I'm just going to move it over. Whoops, move that over to the other needle. So as you can see now, that stitch has been moved over and I usually just take the other end of the needle, take this stitch. Now I'm using this stitch because it's the last stitch I cast on and it's a little bit bigger. And then what I do is just tighten underneath. So now my stitches are overlapped. Now that looks 
a little bit fiddly in there, but you absolutely do not see it when your garment is complete. So I give it a little tug. Now I'm going to turn my needles horizontal. Again, everything is lined up. And what I'm going to do is take this back needle, which is the gold tip needle. I'm gonna pull that out. I am not ready to work on that yet. And I'm ready to work on this front needle. So now you have a back needle and a front needle. I'm ready to work on this front needle, which is the silver tip. So what I do usually, hold the tip of the needle, find the other end, and just trace it with my finger. Sorry, I'm a little out of the camera focus, but I trace it with my finger. So I come around, trace all the way around, until I find the other tip. What will happen, and it's happened to me, I think it's happened to anybody that's ever knit on two circular needles, you will inevitably at some point grab the other needle, pick up and start working with that, and what will happen is one of your needles is going to fall. It will be this needle that's going to fall out, but we're not gonna do that right now. I'm just letting you know, don't beat yourself up if that happens. So now I have my gold tip needle in the back that's hanging out, I am now ready, let me lower my hands a little, I'm now ready to knit, let's move the ball, and I am now ready to start knitting. So I'm going to go into my first stitch, I'm going to grab the working yarn, and when you start, I'm not gonna lie, when you start, it does feel a little bit fiddly. You're trying to figure out, oops, okay, sorry guys. All right, so you're trying to figure out where you are, what's happening, so now I'm just going to start Super simple. I'm actually gonna do a two by two rib on this. So I'm going to just start working my two by two rib just like I normally would. Oops, just gonna reposition my hand here and I'm gonna keep knitting. And that's basically, that's how you start. I'm going to keep going and nobody really wants to see me knit ribbing so I will meet you up again when I get over to this side. There you go. Oh, that was actually a good thing. You saw how that started to roll like that? It's just because of the way I'm holding it. I am still going to be going into the needle. When I meet up with, I mean, into the stitch, it's still gonna be in the right direction. It's just my fingers moving it, and I just kind of give it a little push back in place, okay? So I will meet you when I get over to this first intersection. Okay, I am now at the almost at the end of this first front needle. I have two stitches left here to knit. I just completed two purls, so I'm going to knit these two. And I do apologize again for my awkwardness, but it's getting used to the new stand and working on a tutorial. Um, I'm absolutely loving this though, by the way. Okay, so anyway, let's keep going. So now, I am now done. I just knit off the last two stitches. Let's do that again, because I was talking and got distracted. So I'm gonna do that again. Knit the last two. Okay, now you need to turn. So what I'm going to do, I do not pull this needle out first. I will turn and I will do that again. I've got the needles here. I still have a back needle in the front. I turn, the back of my hand is facing me. So now I'm going to turn so the, my palm is facing me. I'm going to switch hands, pull this back, what is now the back needle out of the way and slide the now front needle, which is the gold tip needle, into place. I'm going to trace my cable. I'm going to grab the other end of the needle and I'm going to continue knitting. Now, I think I ended with a knit two, so I have to purl. So I'm going to bring the yarn in front of the needle, go into the first stitch, reposition my hands, and I'm going to start with my two pearls. And I'm going to keep knitting across. I do apologize for that clinking. You know what, I might put something on the table here so that's not so annoying. Because if I raise my hands much higher, it's gonna be a little too close. But anyway, so basically that's it. Now I'm going to continue knitting across. I'm gonna change back to my two pearls and I will meet you at the other intersection. Okay, I am now at the end of the first round. As you can see, my working yarn 
and, and I didn't say this before, but I will in a minute, my working yarn and my tail are now almost one on top of the other again, which means I've completed the row. So I'm going to end with a purl two, and you're gonna see me turn once again. Okay, so I'm ending with two purls. Now, again, this is, now somebody, one of my viewers had this question, Oh, yep, I'm in position. One of my viewers had this question. If I suddenly put this down, how would I know what to do to pick it up? Uh, before I do that, I am going to show you how to do that, but I just want you to see now I'm going to continue to, I'm going to turn again. So once again, the back of my hand is facing me. I'm going to turn. So my palm is now facing me. My stitches are all still at the bottom of the needle. I'm going to pull this gold tip needle out of the way. And I'm going to slide the silver tip needle in the way. Now, if you buy two needles that are the same, obviously you're going to be buying two needles that are the same color. The cable and the needle will be the same color. The best thing to do is put a little dot of nail polish, whatever color you want, as long as you can see it, put a little dot of nail polish on two of the tip, on one pair of needles on each tip. That way you automatically, as long as you see a red and a red or a blue and a blue, whatever color you've painted it, you're gonna know that you've picked up the right needle. That's the best thing to do if your needles are matching. In this case, just for learning purposes, I'm using two different needles. Uh, now the other thing, how do you know when you've completed a round? When your working yarn, let's just rearrange this, when your working yarn and your tail are on the same, can you everybody see that? Are on the same side, let me put this down so you can see. When they're on the same side, it means you are ready to start a new row. You've, you've completed a row and you're ready to start. So again, I've got my silver tips, I'm ready to go again. When your working yarn and your tail are on opposite ends, you've only gone halfway. Okay, so I'm going to, I've now picked up my yarn, move reoriented my needles, rearranged my needles, that sounds a little better, and I'm going to continue knitting. I'm working on my ribbing here, and I'm just gonna keep going. We're also getting a little taste of how I knit. I am a thrower, um, but I've kind of figured out a way to shuttle my hand. Many times either my thumb will stay in place or my fingers will stay in place. Right now, because I'm doing this tutorial, I'm a little all over the place, but <laughs> when I'm going at my normal pace, Usually it's just the upper part of my hand that's moving. So again, I am going to continue across this first half of the row and I will meet you back here again. So as you can see, I have now worked across row two and look at where my yarn is. My working yarn is now on the left side and my tail is over here on the right side. So I have only gone across half. Now when you're working something in the round, you don't have to put a stitch marker because this tail is your stitch marker. You know that once your working yarn and your tail are back stacked over each other, you know you've completed a round. When they're on opposite ends, as they are here, you know that you've only gone halfway. So I'm just gonna keep going around here and I will finish the cuff and then I'm gonna show you how to start working on the leg. It's basically the same thing, but I will still demonstrate that here. I'm back everyone and the cuff is done. I did 10 rounds on this little child sock. So here are the 10 rounds. On an adult sock, I usually do 20 rounds, uh, but I thought this was just enough for demonstration purposes. Now, I just wanna say at this point that I hope everyone is finding this helpful. Uh, I've now put my ironing board on the space so that you don't get such annoying noise as I, so you can actually hear me speak. Um, I know not everyone's going to be satisfied with this. Um, I hope that you do get some benefit from it. Um, you may not be able to see certain things, maybe my hand was in the way, but please let me know if something wasn't clear. Please let me know what wasn't clear or if you'd like to see something again, and I will try to incorporate what was missing or what you'd like to see again in a future episode because uh, I may be able to it may be the turning that you want to see again or the cast on and I can definitely show you that again in a future video 
because again, this is only episode one of a four part series that I'm going to be doing. So just let me know if anything's unclear or if you can't see anything. Um, yeah, okay, so let's keep going. So like I said, the cuff is done. So now I am back to the beginning. I am now gonna start just the plain knitting, just the stockinette portion. So as you can see, now I've put this down. Let's just jumble this up and drop it. <laughs> so now what do I do? How do I pick this thing up and orient myself and know what I'm doing? Because these needles look like they're going in 20 directions. I'm just going to pick it up. I'm picking it up from the knitting. I know that my working yarn and tail are on the same side. Let's just move that so you can see. I know that my working yarn and tail are on the same side, so I'm at the beginning of a row. I'm going to slide this front needle into place, my silver tip needle. I'm going to trace to the other end. I'm going to hold that in my hand, slide my hand back, and now I'm going to start, bring this needle to the back. Now, if this needle stays here, look at what happens. Can you see that my yarn is now coming from the back of the needle? So you just want to move this needle out of the way. So now my yarn is in the right position. I'm going to wrap it around my finger and I'm going to start knitting. And I'm just going to very easily knit across this first round. And move my stitches up a little. Now one thing I like to do that increases speed for me because someone asked about any tips that I might have about increasing speed. Again, I'm going very slowly because of this tutorial. I have the camera between me and the knitting. I'm trying to look through the camera and not really my hands as I'm doing this. So there's a lot of factors that are slowing me down here. But one thing I do like to do is stay very close to the tips of the needles. I find that the closer, now that may feel a little bit scary to some people, but I find the closer I am to the tip of the needle, the quicker I can go. I don't have, now if my needle's down here, for example, my stitches are down this far in the needle, look at what happens. I've, I've now got to pull that off, okay, and stop and pull, and stop and pull that off. But if I stay really close to the, whoops, that's a little too close. <laughs> if I stay close to the tip, it comes off pretty easily. So now, as you can see, I've just talked us through the first half of the sock. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to drop this needle back of my hand. I'm gonna turn my hands around, let go of the yarn. I'm going to pull what is now the back needle out of the way. And I think that may be my hair I knit in there. I'm very sorry. <laughs> and I'm going to now slide the now front needle, which is my gold tip needle. You can slide that a little bit more out of your way. Oh, sorry, that's awful. All right, so I now have my gold tip needle, trace to the end, and get my hands back into the right position, and I'm just gonna continue knitting. And I am actually going to do this entire round in real time for you, so you can see how I'm holding it. I've got my one or two fingers, usually just one finger, because this is so small, I usually, actually, now that I'm slowing it down, I guess all my fingers are inside the sock because I'm supporting the needle. And I'm just going to continue to knit across. And my hands kind of do what they do. I realize this finger starts sticking out as I'm knitting. But none of that matters. It is all on, it's all based on what's comfortable for you. Slide my stitches up a little. And I'm just going to knit across. And I'm gonna go and go and go and go until I get to the end. And here we are. I'm back at the end. Yarns are now on the same side. Turn again. Pull this back needle out. Push the front needle into place. Here we go. Trace my yarn again, trace my needle again. And grab my yarn. And you're not going to have that problem once you're doing the stockinette. The reason that was in the wrong place to start is because I was in position, I had finished with two purls, so the yarn was in the back, which was the position for the purl stitches. 
once you're just working in stockinette, your yarn is going to automatically be above this back needle and in the right position so that you can continue knitting across. Okay, I'm going to try to open my hands a little bit just so you again can see as I go across. Slide the stitches up to the tip and I'm just going. And I'm not, my thumb kind of stays on the knitting and my hand just shuttles back and forth. Again, this is not really a tutorial on how to, how I knit, but I'm just giving you a little demo of that. And my hands move, but this is what's comfortable for me. It's what works for me. There you go. So now I am going to continue working on the leg and I will meet you at the heel. See you in a bit. Okay, everybody, as you can see, the leg is now complete. We have the cuff, we have the leg, and all I did, as I demonstrated before, was just knit across one half of the sock, turn, knit across the other half. So now I'm ready to work on the heel. I'm going to do a short row heel for this tutorial. I know a lot of people, or not a lot of people, but I know there was a question about the drop heel. I might save that and do that for on a separate tutorial, sort of a part two to this, because that's a little more, a drop heel is a little bit more involved. There's a couple more parts to that, and the heel that I tend to use most is the short row heel. Now, again, the heel I'm going to do here is a fish lips kiss heel which is another type of short row heel but it is a paid for pattern so i can't show you but so much and i i'm not going to really explain it in super detail in terms of the numbers and the technique on how the stitches are created but you're still going to get the gist of what i'm talking about um the pattern is the fish lips kiss heel pattern um all of this information will be in the description box below this video all of the links will be there and that was done by socks therapist it is a paid for pattern on Ravelry but I highly recommend purchasing it I can't recommend it enough because it is almost an ebook there's so much information in there that you will find helpful top down socks toe up socks it's really really worth it and it's only a dollar I can't believe that that much information is being given away for only oops I'm sorry I bumped the stand that much information is being given away for a dollar so it is totally worth purchasing and just having in your library so let's get started with the heel now what you're basically doing for this now when you're working a heel whether it's a drop heel or a short row heel you're only going to be working back and forth on one needle the other needle, in this particular case, the, my red cable needle is just the gold tip needle is going to stay there. It's going to hang out. I'm not interested in it, not paying attention to it. I'm only interested right now in my silver tip needle. So I'm going to start knitting across. I'm just going to do, I'm just going to explain basically, I'm going to do two half rows here. So you see what I'm doing. Let's get to the end. La 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 la. Okay, almost there. Hang on one second. There's 22 stitches that I'm working across on this heel. Again, you get to see how I work across one half once again. Repetition never hurts. So now I'm here and I'm ready to start doing the short row heel. Um, so what I'm basically going to do, I'm working my short row heel. That's stitch one. And now I'm just going to turn. Okay, I'm going to turn, but I'm still working back now on the purl side. Wait, I need a little slack in the yarn here. I am working on the purl side only on one needle, the same needle. I'm still working on the silver tipped needle. The other needle hangs out. I'm not interested in it. It's going to stay right there. I purl a lot slower than I knit. I know that's the same and that's the case for many people. <laughs> so here I go, going across. A lot of people don't like the purl stitch because it's, there's a theory that it's the second stitch you learn how to do. And a lot of people get very attached to the first thing they learn how to do, which is the knit stitch. I don't know how true that is, but okay. So I'm now in the same position on this side and I have worked another short row and I turn again so basically what you are doing now for the heel 
And again, I'm not really going to explain that. Again, it's a paid for pattern and I don't want to, um, it would be wrong obviously to go into how that all works, but you're basically just going to go back and forth. So across and then back, across and then, or across and then back on just this one needle. Now I am working on an adult sock right now. Some of you may have seen me talk about it on Instagram. I'm going to put that over there for a moment and bring this beauty into place. So as you can see here, I've decided to change color because I can't help myself. I love this Malabrigo sock in the natural colorway so much. I throw it into everything. But as you can see now, look at where the needles are. So here would be my back needle. I'm just turning this around so you can see it. It's still hanging, oops, sorry, I think I was off camera. I hope you can see. So let's move this one out of the way. There we go. So you can see now that this needle is still hanging out down here. I'm still not interested in it. I'm still working on this first needle. And I'm just short rowing back and forth. There are many tutorials on short rows. I will try to include one also in the drop down box if anyone is interested in that. Um, again, the Fish Lips Kiss Heel is a paid for pattern. So I know a lot of people who do short row heels in their socks will turn to a German short row. For example, Mina Phillips uses a German short row in her, a lot of, I think almost all of her sock patterns. <clears throat> so if you're interested in doing just a basic pattern, um, I linked to it in my last tutorial, but Mina, Mina's vanilla sock recipe has short row instructions if you wanna give that a try. Or again, here's the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, which is the one I use. And again, back and forth. All I'm doing is going back and forth on here. Now, I'm going to continue on this heel, and then I'm going to show you what happens when I have to rejoin with this needle and then go back to working in the round. So stay tuned, be back in a bit. Okay, everybody, as you can see, the heel is now done. I have this perfect little pocket, which is pretty much what a short row heel does. It creates a little pocket for your heel. So all of my short rows are done. Look at how beautiful and neat that is. I absolutely love the Fish Lips Kiss Heel. So now I am ready to rejoin. Now again, I'm working on this adult sock, so the needles are the same color. I hope that doesn't throw everybody off. Um, I'm going to go back. My other sock is still here, but for the sake of time, um, I went on to this sock, so I really hope that's not throwing anybody off. And I'm going to finish off the toe. You're gonna to be able to see the toe on this sock. So let's just continue with this one for a moment. So now I am ready to finish off my heel and start working in the round. However, what I actually didn't do, where is it? Oh, it's over there, okay. So never mind. pretend I didn't say that. Okay, so I'm ready to start back. Now, what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm going to reconnect this yarn. So I'm going to work this stitch and this stitch. So now I'm done. I'm going to pull this needle out. Actually, look, let's do it the same way I've been doing it. So I'm going to turn, pull this needle out, push this needle back into place, now this is the tail that I left off when I changed over from this ball, from the stripy ball onto the plain ball to do the heel. So that tail is hanging out here and I'm gonna, you're gonna see me weave that in in a minute. And I've demonstrated that before on videos, but again, the point of these videos is, these tutorials is to have all of the information, all of the tutorials in one place. So I am gonna show you how I weave that in. So now I'm going to trace it, find the needle. And actually this is a good, this is a good lesson too on how to do this when the needles are the same. So I don't think anything is lost here. So now I'm going to start here. I'm going to break this off and I just pull. I'm gonna put that to the side. I'm going to reconnect with this yarn and I just drape it over the needle and start knitting. Now this tail is going to be woven in when I come back later. 
all the tails that's also the sorry I went off camera again that's also the beauty of this of this technique where you knit in your ends as you go when I'm done all of my ends are going to be woven in my sock will be finished all I have to do is clip them off so I will be back in one sec when I get to the other end of this okay so I am almost to the end here and the reason I stopped there and the question I know I'm gonna get is when I'm weaving in the ends do I stop to count how many stitches I leave off here no I just kind of eyeball it so here is that tail from the original ball so what I'm going to do here is pull that in between the two needles I'm going to drape it up and over my finger and now I'm going to weave that in and I'll come a little closer so it's an over and I just keep weaving in like this I hope everyone can see that so I'm draping that tail over the needle and then you see where the tail is it doesn't actually get locked into place until you work the next stitch so it gets a little tight in here and you can pull this out you can make that a little bit longer if it works for you okay so now I'm done so now what happens I'm gonna pull this needle out just for the sake of this part you see this big gap in here here is the tail I just wove in I'm gonna give that a little tug and all the way down here was the original tail when I broke the yarn I give that a little tug and voila everything is tight there's no gaps, there's no holes, and I am ready to just continue knitting. When I come back around, I can do it now, I can pull that tail in, oops, there I am, I can pull that tail in, tuck that in, and all of these are gonna get, and you can even cut it now if it's getting in your way, but once it's tucked in there, it's not really bothering me. Now, the last tail that needs to be woven in is going to be that one over there. Okay, so now, once I have rejoined, here are the other two stitches on the other side. I'm going to slide my needle in there, pick up my working yarn, and I'm gonna to continue to knit. And what I do also is just give an extra tug. See, that's how loose it can be. I just give it a little extra tug, keep going. Give it a little tug, and just keep knitting across. And I'll just, I'm knitting across, knitting across. So I will show you again what's gonna happen when I get over here. Now, as you can see, I now have two more ends here that need to be woven in. And it kind of, let's move that needle out of the way so you can see, it kind of makes sense which way they're gonna go. This one, I want to go over there. This one, I want to come this way. That way, the gap will then be closed. Okay, can everyone see that? So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pull this through, you get to see it again, between the needles, drape it up and over my finger. Give myself a little more slack here. I'm going to go in, drape it over the needle to start, and start knitting. Now this is not my idea. This I did not come up with this. This is Kristen, from who is the Cozy Knitter, who came up with this. Kristen, I believe, God, I hope I'm saying that right. Okay, she, Kristen, Christine, I think it's Kristen. So now she is the one that I originally saw how to do this and was completely blown away. I mean, it really did blow me away. So now I am going to pull this needle out, give this a turn, and I'm gonna give this a pull and this a pull. I'm going to turn, I hope this isn't too confusing, come around, and now this is the last end that's coming from here this is going to be woven in in the same way and then I will show you once again how clean both sides look so as you can see guys everything has now been woven in there are no gaps I am ready to continue knitting across here there are no gaps no gaps on this side and I am continuing where is the string <laughs> I am continuing now with the striped yarn and the next color that will continue is this very soft pale pink I think it's showing up a little white on the screen but if you look on the ball you'll see it's a very very pale pink next to the white that is going to be the next stripe and my stripes will continue 
there that is basically how you do the heel uh, again this video is already very long so I am NOT going to do the drop heel here I will do that in a separate video and the last segment for this tutorial will be how to do the toe I will be back shortly hello everyone so as you can see our cuff is done leg is done here is the heel on the child sock sample that I was using and I have now worked down the leg. So let me just turn that in profile so you can have a look. There you go, it is all done. And now if I turn it this way, once again, my working yarn and tail are lined up and I am ready to start the toe decreases. And this is done the same way. You are working back and forth. So this is the back half of the sock where the heel is. You have the front half of the sock so I'm going to push my silver tipped needle into place, trace it, once again grab the end, and I'm going to start my first decrease. So I knit the first stitch, I'm going to do a slip, slip, knit, right across here. I'm going to knit that stitch, knit those two together, and then knit across to the other side. So I will do a few rows of decreases and then we will get down to kitchenering, doing the kitchener stitch on the toe. I also wanted to say as you are knitting across you are going to work the decreases at the beginning of the first half and at the midpoint you are then going to turn and continue to do your decreases in the same place right at the midpoint and then at the end. So again, like I said, I will do a few rows of the decreases and then we'll meet right back to do the toe. And we have finished the toe decreases. Here they are, look at that. So here is the back half of the sock all done. Here is the front of the sock all done. I have decreased to 10 stitches. We are all done. And now it is time to Kitchener the toe. So basically what you would do at this point, I break my yarn, I will slide, move that out of the frame, I will slide my silver tip needle into place, I will slide my gold tip needle into place, and I will hold my yarn and start kitchenering. But of course I don't have a needle, so I will be back in a second. <laughs> so. Kitchenering or using the Kitchener stitch to close up the toe is done the same as with double points and the same as with magic loop. I will still show that um, for a brief moment. I go into the first stitch, pull my yarn, I take that stitch off the needle, I go into the next stitch as if to purl, bring that through. Leave that on, go into the stitch on the back needle as if to purl, take that one off, and then I go into the stitch as if to knit, and leave that on. So now I have basically just removed two stitches from the needle. I will do that one more time. Go into the first stitch as if to knit, take it off. Second stitch on the front needle as if to purl, leave it on, first stitch on the back needle as if to purl, slide that off, second stitch on the back needle as if to knit, and I leave that one on. And as you can see, my stitches are becoming closed, my toe is closing. So I'm going to basically finish up this toe, this sock will be done, I will have a couple of closing notes, and will be all set. So everybody, we have completed our sock. Here we are. Here is our toe, all kitchenered. I'm sorry, there is no autofocus. <laughs> um, but there is the kitchener. There is our, those are our toe decreases. Our fish lips kiss heel. We have our foot, all of the parts of our sock. Here it is in profile. And it is done. 
I am so excited. I'm, I know that this tutorial is very long. There's a lot of information. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend watching this all in one. If you get to this point, if you stuck with me, um, thank you so much for doing that. Uh, I hope that um, you have gathered some information. I hope that some of this was helpful for you. Please, please tell me if there's anything that you need to see again. If there's anything that wasn't clear, again, this is the first time that I have done an extended tutorial like this. Um, it was also recorded over a couple of days, so I do apologize also for lighting changes and all of that, but I hope everyone can sort of see past all of those little amateur hiccups, and I hope that the information was indeed helpful to you. Um, once again, here's our little sock, and I have to say it actually fits my son perfectly. <laughs> I'll try to include a little picture of this one on his foot. Of course, I have to do the second sock now. He was so excited and says, Mommy, you knit a sock for me? And his little voice went up at the end of the sentence and it just <laughs> melted my heart. I was so excited that he understood. He knows what my knitting is uh, and he's only three and a half. So I will definitely be knitting the mate to this sock for him um, but like I said I will definitely include a picture of this on his foot again thank you so much for watching I am going to stop talking now um, there will be more tips and tricks for just knitting items um, that I may not have in, for knitting items in the round on two circles that I may have forgotten to mention here and you will definitely see those in uh, the upcoming the other upcoming videos they will also be much shorter because I am not, obviously I did, this is a two part video. I did the explanation in the beginning and then all the demoing with the parts of the sock. So the other videos should in theory be shorter. <laughs> um, I can't guarantee because I love talking about this stuff so I can't guarantee. Um, but again, thank you so very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. This has just been so much fun for me. I've had such a great time and uh, I will see you in the next episode of the Earth Tones Girl Knitting Series. Thanks, everybody. Bye. <laughs>